Hey guys, this is Francis from Fluke Skite Surfing, and in this video, we're gonna go over three skills to practice your water start. These three skills are really gonna make your water start a whole lot easier. It's all about kite flying, and like we know, kiting is 90% flying the kite. So even though we have the board and it's time to do the water start, it is all about flying the kite. So these three skills are gonna help you get there. In this video, we're going to go over flying the kite one-handed, which is very important, uh, continuous kite flying, which is really the key to success in the water start, and how to stop the kite at various positions in the clock. So those are the three skills we're gonna cover in this video. We are down in front of the Robinson Club in Cape Verde. If you're looking at your next kite destination, this is probably the ultimate place to come, and Cabo Verde should be on every kiter's list. Um, it's got all-time conditions, and here you can kite out right in front of the resort. They've got an awesome water center. Gear is included, so that's super cool, and the resort is gorgeous, so non-kiters are gonna have a really nice stay here as well. So, we've got the perfect conditions to practice these skills for a water start, so let's get into it. All right, so skill number one, flying the kite one-handed. This is a really important step to get to the water start because we need to walk down to the water, pick up our board, body drag away from the beach, all while flying the kite with one hand, and then we need to bring the board in front of us to get our feet in the straps or on top of your board if you're doing it strapless. The wind is super light right now, so I have to keep the kite pretty busy if you see me jumping around. Um, so let's go over how to fly the kite one-handed. So flying the kite one-handed, we're using our top hand to fly the kite. So if we're traveling in this direction, we're gonna have this hand on top of the bar. To travel in this direction, the kite needs to be between 12 and 45 degrees. But what I find is best um, to move around the beach more easily is to have the kite about an hour off 12. It's a bit higher. You kind of want to avoid 12 o'clock because it's really easy for the kite to luff out of the sky. If the lines lose tension, it can flip inside out. So having it just an hour off 12 is going to be easiest. Um, top hand to fly the kite. When it's time, when we want to go pick up the board, it's going to be easiest to have the kite a bit higher so you can bend down and pick up the board. If the kite is too low, it really wants to travel that way. So it might be harder, well, it will be harder to bend down to get the board. So bring your kite a bit higher and then it's easy to get the board. Now you've got the board and I find it easiest. I like to have the board upwind of me. This helps keep it next to your body rather than, and then you can use your top hand to fly the kite. You might need to dip the kite a bit lower to travel towards the water. But again, once you're getting in the water, bring your kite a bit higher so you can wade in comfortably. You know, you're not getting dragged out to the beach. So yeah, <laughs> then when you're in the water, you wade out, you've got your board and you can drop the kite lower so you can body drag away from the beach. Again, when it's time to, when you've left the beach and you're ready to bring the board in front of you, bring your kite a bit higher, but not all the way to 12. Bring it a little farther in front of you so you can bring the board in front of you and that you still have tension on the lines. One thing to remember when you are bringing the board in front of you, you can't be pulling on the bar so much that the kite moves backwards. That's gonna make you maybe flip over and spin on your back. So we always want the kite, I think just an hour off 12, so you can bring the board in front of you. Now you've got the board and you can get your feet in the straps. Put your other hand on the bar. All right, skill number two is stopping the kite at different clock positions in the wind window. You wanna practice stopping the kite at each different clock position for really good practice, but the uh, two main positions we're gonna practice in this skill are to stop it so once you're riding after your power strokes and to bring it back up to 12 and stop it. You need to especially be able to bring your cock kite back up to 12 o'clock without going past 12, okay? So when we're working on our power strokes and we're traveling in this direction, the kite cannot go past 12 because that's gonna stop your forward motion. So when we're traveling this direction, you know, the kite's between 12 and 45 
45 degrees on this side. When we're traveling this way, the kite's between 12 and 45 degrees this way. So we want to practice stopping the kite at 12 without going past 12 and also down to 45 degrees and holding it there. That's our riding position. This is when the kite has enough power and this is when we set the kite and forget it and we're cruising off into the sunset. So this brings us into our last skill, which is the secret to the water start is continuous kite flying. Okay, so when we're doing the power stroke, uh, it's not just one dive. You know, the most important thing is that you bring the kite back up and then you do it again, back up. When you're flying the kite back up, it actually gives you lift. And this, I think, is when I really get pulled out of the water. So you send the kite first, you have to fly back up, and then that gives you the lift to stand up, but you have to keep doing that. Okay, so usually a power, uh, water start takes two to three power strokes before you can park the kite, like we just talked about in the last skill. So to do the power stroke, we're gonna start with the kite at 12 in this example. You know, if the wind is really light, you might actually need to start from an hour off 12 and go from one to 10.30 or, you know, so. But for this example, let's start at 12 o'clock and we're going to dive the kite down to 10 and back up to 12. So one power stroke is going from 12 to 10 to 12. So to do that, <clears throat> hands on the bar, our feet are in the foot straps. Uh, when we dive the kite, you want to shoot the bar in because that's going to have more direct control of the kite using the leader lines. You can't try steering the kite up here is going to be no good. So to dive the kite, sheet in, dive the kite to 10 and then fly it back up to 12 and sheet out, stopping it at 12. It's this motion that's going to generate the power in the kite for you to stand up. And the most important thing is flying the kite back up. You don't want the kite to come past 12. Remember, if we're traveling in this direction, the kite's between 12 and like 45 degrees. This side, it's the opposite in the motion of travel. You know, if the kite goes past 12, you're going to lose that forward momentum and then you'll probably travel past the kite and that's when the kite can fall out of the sky too. So um, continuous kite flying is really important. Uh, it's good to get a feel for it, you know, you know, keep flying the kite, keep flying the kite, and then, yeah, practice doing it. Practice doing it 10 times, especially if you haven't kited maybe since your last vacation. Um, go out for a body drag and do 10 power strokes to get the feeling back. It's really good, uh, it's a really good way to feel the power of the kite, uh, so you can expect it when you have the board. Um, <clears throat> typically, a water start takes two to three power strokes to get up and riding before you can park the kite. So yeah, practice that. And look, that's it for this video. Uh, three skills to practice for your water start. I hope this helps and we'll see you in the next one.